Hello. Today I'm going to be testing and showing the Samsung Power Adapter All Things One Place Comparison. I have various Samsung Power Adapters ranging from this not so little 3.5 watt adapter all the way up to this 65 watt Power Adapter with multiple ports. It will be interesting to see how they've progressed over the years and how they've improved the product over time. I wonder how they've changed the pricing also. This video is a little different than my usual USB Power Adapter videos. If you'd like to see more like this, there's a playlist of the various power adapters where I compare them for power in and out as well as efficiency to see which ones are the best performers. Check out the links in the description and on screen. Some common things shared between all these devices is they all have safety listings, they all safely shut down under overload conditions, and they all operate as advertised. The first device in today's roundup is this 3.5 watt kind of massive USB-A power adapter. This shows the progress that has been made. It's a large and very low power device. In terms of the test data, this one is bad. It doesn't meet the latest efficiency standards and it has a very poor power quality score with a rating of 66 out of 200. The efficiency standards have requirements for idle power consumption as well as efficiency when active. This adapter doesn't meet either requirement. By today's standards, this would take a full night and maybe even more to fully charge modern cell phones. Forget about a tablet or a laptop. The next device is this 5 watt power adapter. Samsung shrunk things down a lot for this USB-A power adapter. I'm assuming the goal was competition with the Apple 5 watt adapters. This device is extremely lightweight and compact, but it also has low efficiency and also doesn't meet today's energy efficiency standards and is one of the lowest in terms of the power quality score, sitting at 75 out of 200. The next device is this 10 watt USB-A power adapter. This is a 2 amp, 5 volt device and is still usable today. It is starting to climb the ranks and even meets today's efficiency standards for both standby or idle power consumption and efficiency. This power adapter is no longer available, but it is probably the lightest, cheapest option if you can find one used. It ended up with a power quality score of 86 out of 200. Still not great on that side, but moving up. The fourth device is this 15 watt USB-A power adapter. This one is the first device with the quick charge or adaptive fast charging. Samsung calls this various other names too. This is where they increase the voltage of the output in order to deliver more power to the device. This device can increase the voltage to 9 volts DC out. This device represents a step backwards in terms of efficiency and performance. It doesn't meet the latest efficiency standards and the power quality score is lower than the 10 watt adapter at 82 out of 200. All right, that's halfway through. Let's see how we're doing. Still haven't cracked the 15 watt barrier of charging yet, and overall these devices are showing their age with lower efficiency and lower power quality performance. Let's keep going. Okay, finally getting into modern times now with a USB-C 15 watt power adapter. This device is a skip. It meets modern efficiency standards, but it has poor power quality for a new device. 85 out of 200. The lower power and voltage means it won't be able to charge your larger devices either. I don't see a value in a device like this. The next device is a 25 watt USB-C power adapter, finally starting to get into some reasonable size adapters. This one also comes with a price bump as it's up to $35. The adapter does push the power quality score a bit higher with an 88 out of 200, but it doesn't do great at idle because it has very high THD. The device meets all the energy efficiency standards, but it does represent one of the worst values in terms of watts per dollar you can buy. The next device is this older 45 watt power adapter. This device has its own dedicated video if you want to check it out. This device brings the highest power quality score yet for a device of this type, a respectable 91 out of 200. This device also has very low THD, those extra harmonics on the current side, at idle, which means it gets some extra credit. This device represents the best weight to power ratio, so if you're looking for the device that packs the most watts per weight, this is the one to get. Second to last device here is the newer 45 watt version of the USB-C power adapter. This one is almost identical, but it's a little smaller, it's a little less efficient, but it's also heavier than the older version. It's hard to tell the difference between the two devices, so really either one is a good choice. They do both come in at the same price point of $50. The advantage of these 45 watt class of devices is they have a wider output voltage range so they can charge a much wider range of devices. I would expect this device to be able to charge a laptop, a tablet, and most phones. And finally, the last device is the 65 watt multi-port device that I looked at in the previous video. 
This is a step forwards in terms of having the option to charge multiple devices in one box. It's a step backwards in terms of quality and performance. This device should be way beyond the capability of the older power adapter, yet scores similarly to the 10 watt device from six or seven years ago. I think Samsung can do better than this. Hopefully the next round will improve things. Overall, it isn't bad, it just can be better. Due to this being a really heavy device, it also doesn't represent the best weight to power ratio. The price, however, was only about $57, so not much more expensive than the 45 watt. Okay, time to compare all this data. First, let's look at the overall efficiency of each of these devices. The winner is the 45 watt older style, and the loser is the 3.5 watt USB-A adapter. So great progress has been made from then to now. Next, let's look at the power quality. So this incorporates all the power metrics like efficiency, total harmonic distortion, and power factor. The best is the 45 watt older style, and the worst is the 3.5 watt USB-A again. I feel like we have a theme here. Really, the 45 watt, 45 watt, or 65 watt all top the chart. Lastly, let's look at cost per watt. The value of these adapter changes things around a bit. The 10 watt USB-A that you can't get anymore becomes the best value adapter. And the overall winner of the power quality ends up a bit lower on the stack due to the higher pricing. I know some people don't like the weight comparisons, but for some, it is important. Here is how the Samsung adapters stack up in terms of weight per watt. The best ratio is either 45 watt power adapter. The worst is that 3.5 watt power adapter again. Stay away from that one. I have been busy working with a team on building a database that has all of these devices available for anyone to search and use. The main page has some general statistics about PQS of devices and the number of listed devices so far. It isn't quite ready yet, but here is what is in so far for Samsung devices. The power quality score is taking into account the device efficiency and the quality metrics. I can click here to see how all the devices stack up on a graph for both the idle performance and the active performance. This isn't totally ready yet, but it's just a quick preview of what is going to be available soon. If you're interested in the project, get in contact. Thanks for watching. Please tune in next week. I will be doing something entirely different. I'm going to be checking car power adapters for performance. Thanks again, and bye.